Welcome back to The Extract. I'm Kyle Meyer, and this is kind of an exciting one, huh? So it's been a little while. I know most of you that watch the channel uh, and have, you know, we have well over a million views, and thanks everyone for watching and, uh, and, and supporting us as we go through this endeavor of documenting uh, many of the world's great winemakers and great wineries and great places and great people. Uh, this is our first interview post-COVID. And uh, it's a real treat to have Stephanie Pope in the table, at the, sitting at the table next to me. Uh, winemaker for Hess Collection. Okay, no, I'm sorry. Technically, what are you the winemaker for right now? Technically. What's it called? The Lion's Head Collection. The Lion's Head Collection, okay. So that's our new brand under our newer ownership of the second generation of the family. Got it, okay. And the Lion's Head Collection is like the groovy Hess. Yes. Is that? So. Yes. The edgy Hess. You get to make the cool Hess. Exactly. <laughs> and then all of our small tasting room only wines. So. Right, okay. Yep. Okay, so you have a fun friggin' job. <laughs> I don't argue. Yeah, no, no, you, you have it pretty easy. I won't, no, I won't say you have it easy. You know, it, it's, it's funny, because looking at the range now, um, it's, it's, it's really something, because, uh, you know, I'm old and crusty. And, <laughs> and, and when, when, when I started drinking Hess Collection wines, there wasn't even a Hess Select at the time. There was, there was just Hess Collection. It was one Cabernet. It was this one. Yep. And then in some years, there was the Reserve, and it came in the fancy wood box. It had the blue label. It had the blue label yep. on it, yep. right? A fun and, story. I just had the 95 Reserve the other day. And? It was holding up delicious. Right. Yeah. Probably something to do with the terroir. Well, probably. Probably, sort of. <laughs> So, so here, here's the deal. We have we have three wines on the table today, and we don't necessarily need to go through them one by wine. But let, let's more have a, a just a kind of a discussion on where Hess Collection is now, because it truly is one of Napa Valley's icon wineries. Mm -hmm. um, one of the wineries that put the next level, the next generation of Napa on the map. You know, we're not talking, you know, sure '87, late '80s had a nice run, but in the '90s there mm -hmm. was an unprecedented string of runs, and now you're kind of. Um, uh, main, you're, you're, you're bringing the, it back. You're bringing it back. You're, you're in a situation where you're maintaining this special situation, the special winery that was created. So I want to kind of talk about today, um, just we've got three Cabernets on the table. We'll just kind of maybe go over some of the, okay, why are these here? What is, what is, the, what is the raison d'etre behind these three wines today? Well, so I would say each one of them represents a vineyard, a location, and a style. Okay. So our Lion Tamer Cabernet, like we were saying, that's our Lion's Head collection. So our new, bolder, juicier thing, Cabernets of today. So mm -hmm. that juicy, jammy style is really what we're going for with that right. one. Right. And then the other ones are much more um, vineyard designate styles. So we're right. looking for a site-specific um, expression in those two wines. Right, so Lion Tamer is more like a like lifestyle Cabernet. We're going to give you what you want. By the way, at like a super reasonable price. Um, the pricing's fantastic. Um, you know, it always has been. Yes, that's one of our handles. Is, yeah, yeah, no, that's always been the mojo. You get a lot of bang for your buck in our bottles of wine, that's for sure. Mm. So this one is, is, is more built for like just here and now, jam on it, get after it, okay? Got it. Uh, and it really is delicious. And there's a bunch of Malbec in this. Bunch of Malbec, yep. Let, let, let's talk about your relationship with Malbec. Malbec is very special to us. Um, we actually learned a lot about Malbec from our sister winery, Colome, back when we used to be together still. Yeah. So we know a lot about Malbec. And back when the director of winemaking, Dave, was replanting the Mount Vitor Vineyards 25 years ago, um, realized that Cabernet cannot grow everywhere. So we planted Malbec in those places where Cabernet won't ripen. Okay. So a little more shaded, a little colder. Um, Malbec does great, holds on. Nice, nice, good set and maintains nice, bright acidity up on the mountain. Malbec ripens easier than Cabernet? In certain right. areas. In certain yes. areas, okay. Yes. So Cabernet does require heat. Malbec just requires consistency. Okay. So wow. we can get a lot of good Malbec up there. And we're actually the largest grower of Malbec in Napa Valley again. Uh, we have, I think it is 35 producing acres. And so we have Malbec everywhere. <laughs> but 35 producing acres makes you the biggest Malbec grower in the valley. Because no one plants that much Malbec. <laughs> Why can you in Cap? Why would you in Cap? No, okay, yeah. Uh, but so, Malbec so, so, makes so a guys, great blender. You guys were like smart, dumb. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you like it, right? We love it. So we actually 
our Lion Tamer line, we have a red blend as well that's based on Malbec. Mm -hmm. So Malbec is the story to that. The name actually comes from what we call Malbec behind the house. So mm -hmm. we use Malbec as a blender to tame the tannins of our lion. So it's our lion tamer. Tamer, got it. Okay, now I hear you. So, but the Malbec extends to the to the other labels as well. It does. But now, now we're going to incorporate that Malbec, but we're also going to incorporate like a sense of place with these wines, which like the Iron Corral, I hadn't seen before, uh, or I mean, it's pretty recent. This is the first one? Mm -hmm. okay, okay. Yep, first vintage. Yeah, this is the first one. So talk about Iron Corral and, and this vineyard site, because I think most people are like, oh, Hess Collection, Mount Viter, Mount Viter, Mount Viter, Mount Viter, but that's changing. That's correct. So our flagship wine, the one that put on its map, Mount Meter. Mm -hmm. um, we recently purchased the Iron Corral Vineyard over in, our, over in Pope Valley, near our Lomi Vineyard. So we have a long history with Pope Valley as it is, and love the fruit from there. And so when this ranch came available, we decided to purchase it. So mm -hmm. now what we're doing is letting that ranch show and express itself. So unlike our Alomi Cab, which everybody's heard about, has yeah. American oak, this is French oak aged, and it's going to be blended with your traditional Cabernet blender. So a little bit of Malbec and mm -hmm. a little bit of Petit Verdot. So we're kind of really letting that show. You kind of get... Petit Verdot. Is, is, Mal, is, is Pope Valley um, cooler or warmer than, say, Center Valley floor? Yes to both. So, okay. So the growing season is very compressed. It gets very, very hot in the summer, average of 100, 100 105 degrees in the daytime in the summer. Serious? But then it drops down to the 50s at night. So it's got okay. a huge swing. So I heard from our viticulturalist the other day that uh, Mount Viter was 75, 80% through veraison, but um, Pope Valley was actually lagging behind quite a bit. But it will make up ground and we'll finish picking it before we finish picking Mount Peter. No kidding. Yeah. It's a crazy site. It's very, like, almost high desert A type. Right. So moving, moving forward with, with, with climate change and that kind of stuff, is it is it a site that you're looking at because of those cooler evenings? And, like, is it going to help you out? or is it... Yeah, we think that... It will actually be more consistent for the longer the longer time. Mount Beater seems to be a little bit more temperamental, a little colder. So mm -hmm. it seems to be if the days aren't hot, they're never they're not going to warm up. It's been great this year though. The season's been very even. Um, the temperatures are, are very moderate this year, so mm -hmm. I think the ripening is going to be a little better. We won't see as much of a swing. Of a swing, the Malbecs won't be as um, shattered and temperamental because during flowering was perfect. Um, so I think. As long as everything holds true, we're gonna have a good vintage. Wait, <laughs> I hate not, saying not, that, not, right? Not wood right? Over here. Knocking all the wood. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is the this is the first one. The results were immediately impressive. You've done a bunch of work in this vineyard, and then of course, no 2020. Right. Um, but moving forward to 2021, what, what do you see from this vineyard moving forward? Is it kind of giving you the same type of mojo? Are you learning things from the site, or? Um, I think we're still learning, you know, when you start with something new, it takes a while to figure out what it's going to give you so you can mm. really learn your blocks. Um, 2021, our quality is phenomenal, but mm. our volume is very short. Mm. Um, yeah. Gotta love growing in California between no rain, It didn't fires. used to be that way. I know, it used to be easy. <laughs> Everyone wanted to be here. It was an easy job. Yeah, right. <laughs> now it's like, okay, what challenge is going to be thrown at us? Right. Um, I think 2021 is going to be bomb. Mm -hmm. Like across the board for all wines. I think yeah. most California producers are working with some good juice. Yeah. If we could just have twice of it. Twice we could just have twice as much. Yeah, of it. that'd be great. <laughs> all right. So you started at uh, at Hess in 2008, mm -hmm. and at that time things were pretty different, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, did were you starting straight with the Mount Viter gear, or did you have to work your way up to this situation? Or I worked my way up. So mm -hmm. my first wine was actually Hess Select Sauvignon Blanc, and then. <laughs> We, pick, we picked four days after I started. Make sure it gets into the tank and make sure the temperature stays the same. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Don't screw it up. <laughs> Don't screw it. Well, you came from a Sauvignon Blanc. You had experience prior to that, right? I you did. You Whitehaven? Or? I did. I worked at Whitehaven, yeah. New Zealand for a harvest. Uh, it's actually where I met my husband. Right on. He's my right import. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, i very familiar with Sauvignon Blanc. Started that at Hess. Um, actually, we... You know, it's changed the style of that program. It used mm -hmm. to be much more barrel fermented. Mm -hmm. So we took that all straight to stainless. Mm -hmm. Then I did all the select and a Lomi. Mm -hmm. um, and 08 was a rough year to start because it was a frost year. Yeah. So the berries were tiny. There was, Again, the story was there wasn't much of it. Right. We, had, again, had fires in Lake County. So we were yeah. dealing, I mean, I remember that. again, yeah. that's the perfect season to start at a winery, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, challenges straight away. So I did that for four years. And then in 2012 was my first vintage on Mount Beater. Mount Beater, yeah. Yeah, and that's been fun because every year we bring in new technology. We innovate more, uh, rebuild. We had the earthquake in 14, mm -hmm. which was lovely. Um, <laughs> we lost a lot of Cabernet down our courtyard, but mm -hmm. allowed us to rebuild a whole new cellar. Right, got it. So now our tanks, we have tiny fermenters, one to three tons, three to five tons, which allows for 
picking by block and not by right. just giant swath up on the back. And you get to run it all through that groovy optical I sorter. I do, it's so much fun. Between, beep, 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 beep. between the optical sorter and tank net, I can control all my tanks on my phone. Right. I could log in right now and control right. the winery. Um, yeah, I how, love how, that stuff. How distinctive are the different plots of Malvita? Because get into the Malvita wine, everyone, like, we, we, we're, we're so quick to group, you know, the, the mountain areas into their own specific terroir, which they do have, right? Yes, they do. Veter's Veter, Spring Mountain, Spring Mountain, Howl Mountain's definitely Howl Mountain, et cetera. But within Mount Veter, because you've had, you guys have had fruit up there for so long yep. and have so many different, like, unique kind of things that you work with up there, what are some of the distinctions between some of these plots? Like, not all Mount Veter is growing the same. That's true. Right. So we have, we have essentially four branches on Mount Veter. Mm -hmm. We have Mont LaSalle, we have Veter Hills, Veter Crest, and Veter Summit. Mm -hmm. So Mont LaSalle is our lowest elevation, about 800 feet right around the winery. Mm -hmm. um, hotter in some ways, but not, not the best cab ground we have. Yeah. Um, right behind the winery, makes great Cabernet. The rest of it's pretty low, so we're actually gonna try, we planted some Malbec down there mm -hmm. in our replant, actually gonna try some Chardonnay there, which is new for us. It's yeah. always been red wine around the winery. Veter Hills is our cab, cab ground. Mm -hmm. So great exposure, lots of heat, um, nice drainage. Um, because of our exposures, we actually don't have frost fans in the vineyard. Don't need it. Don't need it. Because yeah. the frost will just drain right off the hillsides. Is it higher? It's a little higher. So now we're but it's about a better exposure. Better exposure at about a thousand to one thousand to twelve hundred feet. Got it. On okay. Veter Hills, and then from there, Crest and Summit go up and peak mm -hmm. out at two thousand feet. Mm -hmm. um, Crest and Summit are much more the fluffy white. We call it moon dust soils. So very light, shallow, shallow soils. Even on Veter Hills. Um, no more than 12 inches of topsoil anywhere. Mm. Um, so a lot of struggle. These vines really have to want to grow. Right. Um, Veter Crest and Summit is where we do have some of our whites. We do a little Chardonnay and a little um, Albarino for the tasting room up there right. as well, because it's nice and cold. But do you, do you have Cabernet up there too? We do not anymore. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we so used Cabernet to- Cabernet is just the main bowl now, kind yep. of, and some around the winery. Okay. Yeah, and up top is kind of where all of our Malbec is. Um, yeah. It's not worth growing Cabernet if it doesn't get ripe. So, yeah, right, right. You know, why farm it if you don't like it? <laughs> right, oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so we have some Malbec and some Petit Verdot up there. Right, right. The, um, you know, I, I got to say that, you know, the, the distinction between the, the Pope Valley wine and, and the Mount Veter wine, it, it's, it's, it's pretty dramatic. Mm -hmm. You really can see the difference of the colder growing. Yes. Smaller, more intense berries, darker color. We've actually had our wines um, analyzed for their color complexes. And we are some of the darkest wines grown in Napa Valley, just because Crazy. of the exposure and the elevation. And, and the fineness of the tannins. There's a lot of Malvita wines that can be a bit gangly and tannic and chewy. Well, as you know, you're in oh, yeah. your neck I, of the woods. I made many of those myself. Yeah, no. <laughs> but you know, it, it, but again, a compliment to you because the, the, the tannin structure in this wine is so fine. It, it's really, it's, it's, it's delicious now, but you know it's going to age as well. And, and definitely a classic Hess collection wine. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, the, it, it, better than the 87, you know, but uh, you know, come a long way, baby. You know, the 87 but, aged great. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, it did. No, exactly. So, um, Stephanie, thank you so much for coming out with us today. Well, thanks for having um, me. Th well, thanks for coming out. You know, the, like I said, again, it was the first one back. And, uh, and we know people have been like, yay, you know, so... Um, it's great to be in the chair again and talking with uh, great wine makers, wine makers like you and, and having this experience again. So uh, best of luck with Harvest this year and, uh, and thanks for bringing the wines today. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, cheers.